today we are going to be taking basic banana cake to the next level without that much extra effort. So to start off, you want to preheat your oven to 160C or 320F with the fan on and grease or line two 8-inch cake tins. Mine are 3 inches deep and I'm using my homemade cake release to grease them. Set these aside and in a small bowl, sift together your dry ingredients. So I've got 280 grams of all-purpose flour, which is two and a quarter cups, 25 grams of cornstarch, which is a quarter cup, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, and two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. And then using a whisk, just mix that all together until well combined. I think cinnamon just makes almost everything better. <laughs> Okay, now set this aside and now we're going to mash together three and a half large bananas. The exact amount I use is 410 grams and you want to make sure your bananas are nice and ripe. The riper the better. Okay, now set your bananas aside for now and in a large bowl add in 113 grams of unsalted butter, which is half a cup, 105 grams of unflavored vegetable oil, which is also half a cup, and 300 grams of white granulated sugar, which is one and a half cups. And then using a hand or stand mixer, cream that together for two minutes until it's light and fluffy. To that, add in three large eggs, one at a time, mixing well in between each addition. So about 15 seconds in between each egg. Next, you wanna add in your mashed bananas from earlier, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla, and 125 grams of Greek yogurt, which is half a cup. And you just wanna make sure it's at room temperature. And then just mix that all together on a medium speed until well combined. It may look a little curdled, but that's okay. Okay, now just get all of your batter off of your attachments because we're going to be doing the last part by hand. Now to finish off, add in your pre-sifted dry ingredients and then using a spatula, gently fold the batter until just combined and you can't see any more streaks of flour running through the batter and everything's, you know, pretty homogenous. At the same time though, be careful not to overmix the batter, so just mix until just combined. And now we're going to evenly distribute this into our two 8-inch cake tins. Once done, drop your cake tins lightly on the counter to remove any large air bubbles. And now these are going to go into the oven for 40 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. So my cakes are out of the oven now and I cannot tell you how incredible they smell. And now I'm just running a thin knife around the edges to release the cakes from the cake tins and turning them out onto a wire rack to completely cool. These cake layers are honestly so, so incredibly soft. I would even go so far as to say that this is one of the best banana cakes I've ever had. Just look at how incredibly soft these cake layers are and they smell so, so good. Now, while these are cooling, let's go ahead and make a delicious caramel filling and cream cheese frosting. So for the caramel sauce, you just wanna start off by placing 100 grams or half a cup of white granulated sugar and two tablespoons of water in a saucepan. You wanna give that one little mix and then turn the heat onto a medium heat and now just let that sit without mixing it until the sugar begins to turn an amber color. Now as soon as it has a light amber color throughout the mixture, don't let it get too dark otherwise your caramel will taste burnt or bitter. You now want to turn off the heat and you want to immediately pour in 60 grams or a quarter cup of room temperature cream gradually while vigorously whisking. Just be careful because the mixture will rise. Now if your caramel clumps up then place Place it over a low heat and keep stirring until it becomes smooth. Now once that's done, add in 28 grams or two tablespoons of cold unsalted butter and a pinch of salt and then just mix until the butter is completely melted and the caramel is nice and smooth. Okay, so that is our caramel all done. It smells so, so incredibly good. And now you just wanna pour this into a heat-proof bowl and allow it to cool. I like to cover my caramel with some cling wrap, with the cling wrap touching the top of the caramel to prevent a skin from forming as it cools. Now, while this is cooling, let's go ahead and make a delicious cream cheese frosting. 
So start off by creaming together one cup or 225 grams of unsalted butter until it's light and fluffy. If you're using a stand mixer, then you want to do this with the paddle attachment. Next, you want to add in four and a half cups of icing sugar in three batches while mixing on a low speed. So you want to make sure your mix is on a low speed because otherwise your icing sugar is just going to fly everywhere. And you also want to make sure each batch of icing sugar is mixed in well before you add in the next batch. Okay, once that's done, finish off by adding one and a half cups of cold cream cheese. Make sure you're using the firm block type, not the spreadable type. One and a half teaspoons of vanilla and one and a half tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. And then just mix that together until just combined and everything is nice and smooth. Avoid over mixing because the more you mix, the softer your frosting is going to become. And that is literally it. Our crazy delicious cream cheese frosting is all done. So all my elements are ready now and cool down. So to stack my cake, I'm starting off by placing my first cake layer onto my cake stand and then spreading out a nice thin layer of my caramel. Now, if you don't want your caramel to seep out the sides of your cake, then you want to pipe a dam around the top edges of your cake layer and then place your caramel on the inside. But I don't mind some of mine seeping out and I'm feeling a little lazy, so I'm just doing it like this. Next, I'm placing a generous amount of cream cheese frosting on top and spreading that out with my offset spatula. Then my next cake layer goes on top and I'm topping it with more cream cheese frosting. You can make extra caramel and put another layer on the top, but I prefer just the one layer in the middle because I don't like my cakes too sweet and I also don't want it to overpower the banana cake. So I'm just covering the sides with frosting too and then smoothing it out with my offset spatula. And you can see here that some of my caramel is starting to seep out. Another way that you can prevent this from happening is just not spreading your caramel out so much. And then I'm just finishing off the top with a little bit of piping around the edges. And that is it. My banana cake is all done. I cannot tell you how incredible this banana cake is. With the banana packed cake layers, that caramel filling, and then just topping it off with that cream cheese frosting. It really does take your banana cake to that next level. Mmm. That is so, so good. The cake layers are so, so nice and moist and the caramel and cream cheese honestly just pair so, so well with this banana cake without overpowering the banana cake, which is really nice because you still want it to taste like a banana cake. So that is it guys. If you do try out this recipe, don't forget to leave a review on my blog. It really helps my content reach more people and I love hearing from you guys. I'll see you in the next video.